So I'm very happy to present our speaker, who is uh, Sai Jin from MIT, and they have been working on very interesting string problems, quantum algorithms for string problems. So first, they had a paper with uh, Akmal on this problem, and then they improved their own result recently. So that's what he's going to talk about, and thank you for accepting to talk at our seminar. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks for uh, inviting me to this seminar. Um, so I will talk about uh, some quantum algorithms for string problems, especially the longest common substring problem. And this is ba uh, based on joint work with uh, Jakob Knockler and uh, an earlier work joined with Shai and Akmo. Okay, so, so let's define the problem that uh, we are going to look at, the longest common substream problem uh, or the LCS problem. So the input of this problem is like two strings, S and T, and let's say they both have length N and they come from a polynomially bounded alphabet. And the goal is to output the maximum length D of uh, like a common substring between the two uh, input strings S and T. And here uh, we stress that a substring is a, a contiguous part of the uh, input strings. So here is an example. Um, we have two strings of length six and the, their longest common substring is AABC, which has length four. And again, uh, there is another uh, different problem called longest common subsequence, um, which unfortunately also has the acronym LCS. But today we're uh, looking at the longest common substring problem where uh, a substring is a contiguous uh, part of the string. And, and this problem is very important uh, in the uh, string algorithm literature. It's very well studied. Uh, in uh, classical settings, uh, like uh, in the earlier 70s, we already knew that uh, there is a linear time algorithm using suffix tree. And uh, uh, recently there has been uh, more uh, study on this problem in different settings, such as time-space trade-off, dynamic data structures, or like a small alphabet input case. Um, and more recently, this problem was studied in the quantum setting. So let's first uh, fix the, the model that we are uh, talking about. We use the standard uh, quantum black box model. So the input strings uh, X is given as a quantum oracle. So we can uh, uh, give uh, an index I to the oracle and we can get back the I character in the input string. And this can be done in quantum superposition. And as usual, we care about the query complexity of a quantum query algorithm uh, with bounded error probability. And uh, in this work, we do not optimize the log factors in the query complexity. And we, we don't even optimize some like sub polynomial factors uh, which uh, occur in some of our algorithms. And we also uh, care about the time complexity, which additionally also counts the number of elementary gates that are uh, for these non-query uh, operations in the algorithm. And uh, in our algorithm, uh, the, the algorithms are always time efficient, uh, meaning that the time complexity is always uh, bounded by the query complexity times some polylog n factor. Okay. So uh, let me first mention some uh, earlier work on quantum algorithms for string problems. There is a, a very uh, uh, important problem called exact string matching. We are given a, a text and a pattern, and we want to see if the pattern occurs in the text as a substring. We know that the, this problem can be solved uh, by a linear time classical algorithm, such as the KMP algorithm. And uh, there was a, a paper by Ramesh and Vinay back in 2003, which uh, showed that this problem can be solved in roughly root n quantum query complexity and quantum time complexity. So this is quite non-trivial because if you uh, just use Grover search naively, then you would have to nest two levels of Grover search, which is root n times root n, then that will not give any quantum speed up. 
uh, but uh, their paper used um, uh, a technique called deterministic sampling by Vishkin, uh, which uh, uh, gets the quantum query complexity down to uh, roughly root n. And this is optimal up to polylog factors. And uh, this exact string matching uh, algorithm also implies an algorithm for computing the period of a string. So the period is uh, just the minimal um, integer p such that si equals si plus p for uh, all uh, well-defined i. Uh, so this problem also has roughly root n quantum equivalent time complexity. So, so this is some uh, earlier works and uh, uh, they will also be used as subroutines in our new algorithms. Okay, now let's look at the LCS uh, problem. So this problem was first studied in the quantum uh, setting by Legal and Sedigin in 2020. So their result was a sublinear uh, uh, quantum algorithm for this problem. The complexity was n to the five over six. So let's look at this result more closely. What they actually did is to do a binary search over the length of the LCS and reduces to a decision problem, which we call LCS with threshold B. So it just asks whether the length of the LCS has, uh, uh, it has length at least D. So uh, they achieved this uh, uh, complexity for the LCS with threshold D problem. So it's a combination of two different algorithms. One of them uh, has complexity increasing with D and the other one has complexity decreasing with D. And the worst case is achieved by uh, D equals N to the one third and the complexity was N to the five over six. So uh, the complexity looks like this. So, um, so we want to know whether this algorithm uh, can be uh, improved. So first, let's uh, look at uh, lower bound for this LCS with threshold D problem. So let's first look at the extreme case where the threshold D is equal to one. So in this case, the problem is just to decide whether the LCS is zero or at least one. So in other words, this is asking whether the, the two strings have at least one common element, uh, si equals tj for some uh, indices i and j. So this is exactly the uh, bipartite version of the element distinctness problem, uh, or uh, called the claw finding problem or collision finding problem. Um, and this problem was uh, very well studied in the uh, quantum query complexity literature. The, the query complexity is known to be uh, up to a constant n to the two thirds uh, by the work of Aaron and Shi uh, and Ambinis. Uh, and uh, this problem can also be solved in n to the two thirds times some polylog time complexity using the uh, Ambinis quantum work algorithm plus some uh, data structures. And uh, for this uh, time complexity result, we need to assume uh, the full power QRAM with quantum read and quantum write. Okay, now let's look at uh, another extreme case of the LCS with threshold, threshold D problem where the threshold equals N. So th this is asking whether two length N strings have LCS equal to N. In other words, it's, it's asking whether these two strings are identical. So to solve this problem, it's equivalent to like search for a like Hamming mismatch between the two input strings. And this is exactly the unstructured search problem, which we know to ha have quantum query complexity uh, root n up to a constant uh, by the uh, work of BBBV and uh, Grover search. Okay, so we go back to this, uh, uh, picture we have like uh, two lower bounds at uh, uh, each of the uh, two extreme cases, and uh, naturally we, uh, we can prove that for the cases with uh, intermediate values of uh, threshold D, the the lower bound should be like interpolating between the uh, two points. So 
we, we can prove a query lower bound of n to the two thirds over d to the one over six. And this can be proved by a uh, composition theorem. Like we, we construct a problem, which is a, a composition of the element distinctness problem and the unstructured search problem. And uh, uh, we embed this uh, problem into the LCS with threshold D problem. That's how we prove this. And uh, the, the main result of our work is the uh, an almost tight upper bound for this LCS with threshold D problem. Uh, formally, LCS with threshold D is solvable in uh, quantum query and time complexity and to the two thirds over D to the one six times some uh, uh, lower order uh, factors. We have a polylog N and a sub polynomial factor uh, with respect to the threshold D. Okay, so, so this is tied up to this uh, sub polynomial factor. And uh, so, so this result was uh, based on the combination of uh, two papers. Uh, the, the earlier one of these two papers only achieved n to the two thirds for uh, all the uh, values of d. So it was optimal if we consider the unparameterized problem of LCS. But if we uh, consider LCS with threshold d, then it was not optimal. And our new result was an optimal algorithm for all possible values of d. Okay. So now let's first look at uh, how to uh, prove this uh, lower bound n to the two thirds over d to the one six. So uh, this is proved by a, um, a reduction from a composition problem. So the problem is uh, defined as follows. The input given as Oracle uh, contains two sets of strings. We have a, a set S, which is a list of M strings and each string has length D. And each of these M strings have a, a special structure. It is promised to have only uh, one uh, symbol SI that is uh, not a dollar sign. And all the remaining uh, symbols in this string are dollar signs. But this uh, special symbol SI is placed at an unknown position of the, uh, out of all the possible D positions in the string. Um, and we also have a similar uh, set of uh, M strings called T. So we have S and T. And the task is to find a uh, pair of indices I and J such that SI equals TJ. So this is a, a composition of the bipartite element distinctness with the inner function, which is a promise search prob problem. So this is kind of like hiding an element distinctness uh, instance by like uh, uh, putting a lot of uh, useless information, which are the dollar signs. And if you want to access uh, one of the uh, symbol SI, you need to first do a search uh, over this length D string to look for where it is actually placed. And you can look at uh, what is the uh, symbol SI. And uh, uh, we invoke a composition theorem for this promise search problem uh, uh, by uh, Brassard et al. And, and they prove that this composition problem requires uh, quantum query complexity, which is the product of these two problems, the outer function and the inner function. The inner function uh, is a, a global search over uh, uh, D positions, which is root D complexity. And the outer function, uh, we know it is M to the two thirds uh, query complexity. So uh, this entire problem takes M to the two thirds times root D quantum query complexity, and this is tight. So the next step is to embed this problem into an LCS with threshold D problem. So how to do that? We first take each string from the uh, list S uh, and the list T, and we pad the string with a bunch of dollar signs uh, at uh, both sides of the string. Uh, so originally it has length D, and 
on uh, each side of the string, we pad 10 D uh, dollar signs. Then we concatenate all these padded strings uh, into a single string, and we insert some delimiters uh, to separate these uh, blocks of strings. So now we, we get like uh, two strings S and T, and each of them has a length uh, equal to a constant, constant times N. And uh, each of them consists of like uh, N over D blocks. Each block has length uh, 21 times D. So now let's look at the yes and no cases of this problem. The yes case is that there exists a pair of identical symbol S, I, and T, J. So in this case, we can show that the LCS between S and T is actually large. Why is that? It's because we can align this uh, pair of identical symbols. And then uh, because of the padding, we can extend to the left and to the right. And they are all matched because uh, they are all uh, dollar signs. And we can extend to a distance of at least 10 D. So, uh, on, e on each of the two sides, we extend 10 D distance. So uh, we obtain an LCS of length at least 20 times D. So this is the uh, case where there exists a pair of identical uh, symbols. In the no case, uh, there are no uh, identical symbols. And in this case, we can see that any common substring between the uh, two strings S and T must only consist of dollar signs because there are no other common symbols between S and T. And because of our uh, construction, we insert these delimiters. We ensure that um, any contiguous uh, segment of dollar signs uh, only has a length at most 11 times D. So, so in this case, we know that the LCS is at most 11 times D. So we can uh, have a separation between the LCS length in the yes and no cases. So this means that if we have an uh, LCS with threshold 20 D or with them, then we can distinguish between these uh, two cases and we can uh, solve this composition problem, which we know has query lower bound uh, n over d to the two thirds times u of d. And this proof actually uh, even works for uh, like approximation LCS algorithms because we have these like 20 versus 11. Okay, so this is the uh, lower bound proof. Now let's look at the upper bounds. But first, let's look at a warm-up algorithm uh, given by uh, Legault and Sedigin. So we want to solve LCS with threshold D. So the question is equivalent to asking whether there uh, exist I and J such that uh, S I to I plus D equals T J to J plus D. These uh, two lengthy substrings are uh, identical. So this problem is, uh, it can be phrased as a bipartite element distinctness problem with uh, m minus d plus one elements on each side. And each element is no longer a single symbol. It's actually a, a lengthy substring. So we want to tell you if there are two identical lengthy substrings uh, in, uh, among the two lists of strings. So using Einbinding's algorithm, this problem can be solved by n to the two thirds times the complexity for comparing two elements, uh, like comparing two uh, lengthy substrings. So how do we compare two uh, lengthy substrings? We first use a Grover search and binary search to find the longest common prefix of the two strings. And then we look at the next differing uh, symbol and to uh, see which one uh, occurs earlier in lexicographical order. So, so this means that the, com the comparison time is uh, just a uh, root D. So uh, this gives a uh, n to the two thirds times a uh, root D time quantum algorithm. Uh, but the issue with this uh, warm up algorithm is that uh, we are consider considering like 
uh, an element distinguishes instance with n elements. So, um, so the number of elements here is uh, too large. So now let's revisit the previous hard instance to see like uh, what's happening in the, the, the hard case. So if we just apply the warm-up algorithm to this hard instance, then we are actually considering like roughly n possible starting positions of the LCS. So uh, this gives n to the two thirds times root d uh, quantum query complexity. But actually in this instance, only like roughly n over d positions are uh, important because all the other uh, strings are like useless dollar signs. So we actually just care about the uh, this like non dollar sign symbols and each string only has like n over d of them. So so the, this the, the true complexity of this instance should be like n over d to the two thirds times root d. So uh, here, these special uh, positions, these like non dollar sign positions, they are called anchors. The meaning is that if the LCS is large, then there exists an uh, anchored LCS, uh, which means that the LCS should align two of the anchors because they, they are like the, the, the identical uh, pair of symbols. And, and we know that we should align them if the LCS is large. So, so uh, the intuition here is that um, if we can uh, reduce the number of possible positions that we are looking at uh, from n down to n over d, then we can reduce the uh, complexity. And in order to do this, we want to define a, a small set of anchors so that only the anchors are uh, the positions that actually matter in our LCS problem. Okay, uh, but here it's a priori, it's not clear how to uh, define these anchors because like in this example, these anchors are hidden in those like unknown uh, positions and we need to like uh, uh, find these an anchors using like root D complexity. Okay, so, and, and this only, so now, now we are looking at this specific hard instance. And later we'll see that actually this anchoring idea can uh, work for arbitrary input strings. Okay, so, so actually this anchoring idea uh, uh, appears very earlier in classical uh, string literature. So uh, formally we define uh, anchor sets M sub S and N sub T, which are subsets of uh, positions from one to N. And they should satisf satisfy the following property. Uh, if the LCS between S and T is at least D, then there must exist an anchored length D common substring. So here is an example. Here the orange circles denote the uh, anchors. And uh, for example, here we have uh, LCS of length six. And uh, this is an anchored substring because there is a, a common position that belongs to uh, both of the anchor sets. And here, um, I, I haven't uh, told you how to uh, construct these anchors, but uh, we, from the previous example, we can already see that these anchor sets should depend on the input string S and T. Uh, and also depend on the threshold D and possibly also uh, depend on some random seed if we uh, use a randomized construction of the anchors. And our hope is that if the threshold D is large, then we can uh, have smaller anchor sets. So, so assume we have these uh, anchors that are already constructed, then we can reduce the problem to the uh, like an anchored LCS problem. We just want to find a pair of anchors X and Y such that if we align these two anchors and they extend to the left and to the right, then the total length uh, becomes at least D. So here the, uh, we can see that the, uh, the length of the possible extension uh, depends on these like two length D substrings around the anchor X. Like, 
here uh, they are denoted as p of x and q of x. And the, the total length of uh, extension is the longest common prefix of uh, q of x and q of y and uh, p of x and p of y, where p of x are like the, the reversed string extending from x to the left. Okay, so, so this just uh, means that for each anchor, only the uh, le length d substrings around the anchors uh, matter in, in this LCS with threshold d problem. Okay, so now uh, let me state a, a theorem in the SODA 22 paper. Um, suppose we are given an anchor set, it has size m, and it satisfies this strongly explicitly p time computable uh, property. So if we have such an anchor set, then we can detect length d anchored common substring in this uh, quantum time, m to the two thirds times root d plus t, where t is this uh, uh, time complexity parameter. So we can compare this with the warm-up algorithm, which requires n to the two-thirds times root d quantum time. So if we reduce the size of the uh, anchors, like we, we can achieve m much smaller than n, then we can um, get a speed up. Uh, but here we also have this additive term uh, t. So what does this mean? So it means that our anchor set should be uh, efficiently computable. So, and we need this in a very strong sense. We, we want the following property. Given uh, quantum access to the input strings, then for each k from one to m, where m is the size of the anchor set, one can output the kth anchor in the anchor set in t quantum time. So this means that we, we don't want to compute the entire anchor set. Instead, we want to have some like strongly explicit uh, computability. We just, uh, so it's like every time we just ask for a, a specific anchor from the anchor set, and we uh, want to be able to report this anchor in very efficient time complexity. So we, we don't uh, want to compute the entire anchor set because just outputting the anchors would already be like uh, too expensive. Okay. Yeah, quick question. Mm -hmm. So if you only, if you only care about query complexity, does the t drop out? Um, no, we still so so if we only consider query complexity, then we still have this additive term, which is the query complexity of outputting the anchor. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so like in the very um, like naive case, we can like just. Uh, construct this anchor after we read the entire string, but we want to rule out this, right? Okay. So the techniques behind this theorem is like a very standard quantum walk plus some data structures that maintain the lexical graphical ordering of the length D substrings uh, around the anchors, which we previously denoted as P of X and Q of X. So once we know this lexical graphical ordering, then we can uh, use some like, like 2D orthogonal search data structures to like uh, to, to implement this quantum work very fast. But in this talk, I will not get into this part of the algorithm. I, I will focus on the, the uh, the problem of how to construct this anchor set. So, um, so in the uh, earlier paper, so the 22, we constructed um, an anchor set with a suboptimal size. Uh, and in the more recent work, uh, we uh, tightened this bound to almost optimal up to a sub uh, polynomial factor. So the parameter is something like this, uh, the size so if the threshold is D, then the size of the anchor set is only N over D up to some uh, D to the little of one factor. And uh, each anchor can be reported in roughly root D uh, quantum time complexity, again, up to some sub polynomial factor in D and uh, polylog factors in N. 
So if we just plug in this uh, construction into the previous theorem, then we can uh, obtain uh, the, the LCS with threshold D uh, algorithm that we uh, claimed earlier, and to the two thirds over D to the one six. Okay, cool. So um, now let's uh, look at how to like construct these uh, anchor sets. And the key ingredient is uh, the notion of string synchronizing set, uh, which was recently introduced in classical uh, string literature uh, by Kempa and Kochumaka in stock 19. And in our work, we, we need to get a quantum speed up version of the string synchronizing set. Okay, so now let's first uh, uh, state the definition of the string synchronizing set introduced by uh, Kemba and Kochumaka, which is kind of uh, technical. So let's first focus on the non-periodic case. So in the non-periodic case, uh, given a string of length n and a length parameter tau, uh, so the set A, which is a subset of the positions, uh, we call A a tall synchronizing set of S if it satisfies the following um, properties. First uh, is the density uh, property, which says that every uh, length tall interval should contain at least one uh, position from the uh, synchronizing set A. Th these are called the synchronizing positions. So every length tall interval should contain at least one synchronizing position. This is the density requirement. So we, we can look at this example uh, where tau equals three. So we can see that every length three interval has at least one uh, synchronizing position. The, the next uh, property is the consistent uh, consistency uh, property. This says that for every two identical substring in S, uh, that have like length uh, equal to two times tau, then um, they, sh they should be making consistent decisions of whether uh, or not to include the first position i. So formally, if, if si to i plus two tau equals sj to j plus two tau, then i is in a if and only j is in a. So, so here we can look at some examples. So two tau in our example equals six. So here we have a, a pair of identical uh, length six substrings. And we can see that here, uh, they are indeed making consistent decisions of including the first position. And another example, we, we have another pair of two identical substrings. And here they are making the consistent decision of not including the first symbol into the synchronizing set. Okay, so uh, here we have this observation. Like we want to apply this synchronizing set to the LCS problem. So we observe that if the threshold D is at least three tau minus one, then we can use this synchronizing set as our anchor set for solving the LCS with threshold D problem. So, so this is stating that if D is at least three times tau minus one, then any length D substrings should be uh, like anchored by a pair of anchors in the synchronizing set. So why is that? We, we can look at this example where we have a, a common substring of length uh, nine which is uh, greater than three tau minus one. So uh, because of the consistency uh, condition, we know that the first tall positions must be making consistent decisions of whether or not to be included in the synchronizing set because, because the common substrings are length three tall. So if you start from any uh, starting positions among the first tall positions, we still have at least two tall uh, uh, length that can be extended from that position and uh, they are still consistent because they are inside this pair of common substrings. Okay. And then because of the density condition, we know that among the first tall positions, there must exist one uh, 
anchor in the synchronizing set. And because they are consistent, so they must be uh, aligned. So this gives an uh, anchor that anchors this pair of uh, common substrings. And uh, in order to use this uh, synchronizing set, we want to have like uh, we want to have a small uh, set of uh, synchronizing positions. We want the size of A to be small. And the smallest size we can hope for is N over tau because every length tau interval should have at least one synchronizing position. So th this is the uh, best size we can hope for. But unfortunately, there are some technical cases where we cannot achieve this, uh, namely when the uh, the some part of the strings is highly periodic. So, for example, in this case, we have a uh, like uh, a part of the strings with period equals uh, one. So, if we want to uh, simultaneously achieve density and consistency, then we would have to uh, include all the uh, positions, which would be uh, too large compared to n over tau. So uh, this is why uh, in the actual definition, there is some uh, uh, technicality to deal with the uh, highly periodic case. So, so this is the uh, full definition of string synchronizing set given by uh, Kempa and Kochumaka. So the difference here is that uh, we only require a density when the uh, the uh, the neighboring region has relatively high uh, period. Um, the, it, like uh, the, the per the, it should not, it should not be like very uh, periodic uh, region. So if, if it's a periodic region, then we just uh, don't include any position from that region into the synchronizing set. And uh, under this definition. The, the main uh, result of uh, Kempa and Kochumaka is that there indeed exists uh, a synchronizing set of small size, like the optimal size up to a constant. And this can be constructed in classical order n time. So uh, this is a, a very useful result. And, uh, and this uh, synchronizing set can be uh, used for LCS with threshold D. Uh, but we have to uh, make this modification. So this modification was uh, given by this uh, paper, paper from SR21. So uh, in addition to the synchronizing positions, we also include some additional anchors to uh, specifically deal with these highly periodic regions. So look at this example where we have a, uh, a pair of LCS that are very periodic. The period is uh, AB. And uh, so the red positions are synchronizing positions, but in this highly periodic region, we don't have any synchronizing positions. Then we have this like uh, some green additional anchors added. So they are added near the boundary of these highly periodic regions. So the, the intuition is that because they are periodic, so it's you have some freedom to like slide your uh, string to uh, like by some integer multiple of the period. So you don't need to like consider all the possible uh, uh, shifts to align them. You only need to like uh, take care of the uh, positions around the boundary. And you can see that if you add those uh, anchors then you can guarantee that the longest common substring could still be anchored. So this is the intuition behind uh, their uh, construction. And uh, um, and these additional anchors uh, are kind of the, the easy case um, in our quantum setting because uh, uh, previously we mentioned that uh, to compute a period of a, a string, we can do, do it in like a, a square root time. So using that result, uh, we can deal with this part relatively easily. But uh, I will not uh, get into details. So um, the the main part is still this uh, task of constructing the string synchronizing set. Uh, yeah. So th this was the uh, example LCS, and th this is the pair of uh, anchors, additional anchors. Okay. Um, so 
So let me mention that the string synchronizing set is a very useful tool uh, in classical string algorithms, and it has found um, many applications recently. Uh, for example, uh, like sublinear time BWT and optimal LC data structures, and also longest common substring in the setting where the alphabet size is small and they are like uh, compressed in the uh, input. And in this case, uh, they use the syn string synchronizing set to achieve sublinear classical algorithms to compute uh, the LCS. Yeah, so there are many uh, applications. So now let's state our uh, uh, quantum version of the string synchronizing set. So, um, so this is our uh, main technical uh, theorem in this uh, recent uh, SOLA 23 paper. Given a string of length n and the length parameter tau, and also polylog n bit uh, random c, then there is a tau uh, synchronizing set of S such that uh, the, the density and consistency conditions uh, remain unchanged, and the sparsity uh, condition is like slightly uh, worse, worsened by a factor of uh, tau to the little of one. So we achieve sparsity in expectation. So it means that over the uh, random seed, uh, if you look at any length tau interval, then the expected number of synchronizing uh, positions inside that interval is at most tau to the little of one. And the most important uh, condition in our theorem is this efficient local access uh, condition. It says that given any index i, we can report all the synchronizing positions in this length tau window from i to i plus tau in roughly a uh, square root of tau uh, times uh, polylog and quantum time per element. So, so it's a very efficient uh, quantum algorithms uh, that can report all the synchronizing positions in the length tau uh, interval. To compare uh, this with the classical construction, um, uh, we know that the, the classical construction, if we want to achieve this efficient local access, we have to like um, take like order tau time per element. Uh, but uh, in quantum setting, we can achieve this like square root speed up. Okay. So using this uh, quantum version of the string synchronizing set, we can uh, immediately get the, the good anchor set for the LCS with threshold D problem uh, by setting uh, tau to be uh, roughly D over three, which is a constant factor of D. And this would imply the uh, the LCS with threshold D algorithm that we claimed earlier. Okay. Um, so now let's talk about how how do we construct this like quantum version of uh, string synchronizing set. So um, right, let's focus on the non-periodic case, uh, namely every uh, length tau. A uh, region of the input string should have a uh, period at least tau over three. So we, we, we don't deal with these highly periodic regions. They, they can be dealt with very easily, but we uh, don't want to get into details in, in this talk. Um, so our construction still uh, follows the uh, Kempa and Kochung Markas framework of like picking local minimizers. So what does it mean? We choose a mapping H from length tau strings to p, where p could be any uh, totally ordered set. We choose this mapping and uh, we introduce this shorthand. H sub i is defined as the, um, the mapping of the uh, length tau substring starting from index i. So uh, something like this. Um, and then we include position i into our uh, synchronizing set, if and only if the minimizer of uh, hj, where j ranges from i to i plus tau, this minimizer is either uh, hi or hi plus tau, 
namely either the beginning of this window or the end of this window. So we only include I when like it kind of uh, becomes the minimizer of a uh, length tall uh, window. So this is their uh, framework. And they prove that if you define your uh, synchronizing set uh, as this, then it automatically satisfies consistency and density. So consistency means that your decision is only based on your uh, local uh, context of uh, length roughly two times tall. So this uh, immediately follows from definition. And the density also holds, which, uh, which uh, states that every length tall uh, interval should ha have at least one uh, synchronizing position. And this is guaranteed uh, by this construction roughly because like you can look at every uh, length two tall window and uh, just look at the minimizer of this window. And you can uh, use this minimizer to argue that uh, the, the length tall window should uh, be hit by one uh, minimizer, uh, which is included in the synchronizing position. So that's the density. Okay. So, um, and we have another fact, which is if we can have an algorithm that can compute the range minimum of this uh, mapping, this uh, H sub J over a window of uh, length tau. So if we have this range minimum algorithm, then we can convert it into an algorithm to report the uh, synchronizing positions inside a length tall window. Um, in like T time per element, if you can uh, solve the range minimum uh, in T time. So th this is also uh, kind of straightforward. You just uh, find the minimum inside your window and uh, you report it and you look at the next window and uh, you keep doing this until you uh, exhaust the entire length tall window. Okay, so uh, so the remaining uh, task for us is to design this mapping H so that first we can achieve very good sparsity, which is like one over tall uh, in average up to some subnormal factors. And we want to, uh, we want to be able to solve this range minimum problem uh, relatively fast. We want to achieve roughly root tau quantum time. So if we can achieve both conditions, then we can use this mapping to dis, uh, define the synchronizing set and uh, get what we want. So, so it all boils down to like how to design this uh, mapping H. So let's first look at a very naive attempt where H is just the identity map. We, we, we don't do any like uh, mapping at all. We just map the length tall string to itself. So what it means is that we, we include the synchronizing, uh, we include I into the synchronizing set. If the, the length tall uh, substring starting from I is the lexicographically minimum uh, of the, like the two tall length window. So, so if we um, uh, use this mapping, then the corresponding range minimum uh, task is, some, is something like this. We are given a length two tall string and we want to find the lexicographically minimum length tall substring of this uh, length two tall substring. And it turns out that this problem has a, a kind of fast quantum algorithm uh, in in like roughly square root tau uh, quantum time complexity. And this was achieved by a divide and conquer uh, combined with quantum minimal finding. So the original motivation for studying this problem was that it, it can be uh, used to solve a very important uh, problem called the minimum string rotation problem. You're given a string and you want to rotate it to achieve the smallest possible lexicographical order. And, and, and this, problem is kind of a generalization of this minimal string rotation problem. That's why we uh, study this uh, in the first place. Um, and, uh, but an obvious problem with this uh, like naive mapping is that 
if we use this, then the synchronizing set A could be very dense if the input string is like adversarially constructed. For example, if the string is then like uh, it keeps increasing, then you would have to include almost all the symbols in your synchronizing set. So this works very uh, uh, poorly in the worst case. But if the string is kind of like random, then you can expect it to uh, behave uh, relatively better. Um, okay, so this is the naive uh, first attempt. Now let's look at the second attempt, uh, which is was also mentioned in the original paper by Kempa and Coach Maka. So now we want to uh, overcome this uh, worst case scenario. So we do something random. We pick H to be a random hash function. So we map every um, length tau substring to a random uh, like say a random integer, and then we uh, use this definition. So now you can like achieve very good sparsity in expectation. The reason is the following: because we are working with a non-periodic case, so we know that uh, the the period should be uh, uh, very large. So this means that in a like length tall window we should have at least linear in tall number of distinct substrings. So why is that? If, if we have a lot of uh, substrings in the window that are identical, then at least one, uh, at least two of them should uh, have very large overlap. And they have overlap and they're identical, then it means that the period, period is small. So this contradicts our uh, assumption. So we have, a bunch of distinct substrings, and uh, by by this mapping H, they should all be mapped into like distinct uh, uh, numbers. And for every one of them, the probability that it receives the minimum uh, hash value among the uh, all the other ones in the window should be very uh, small. It should be inversely proportional to the number of distinct substrings, which is uh, one over uh tau so this gives a uh, very good sparsity in expectation so this is good but the issue is like if we uh do this random hash function then how can we uh compute the range minimum uh efficiently so previously in the naive case we somehow uh use the structure of the problem to design the divide and conquer algorithm to be able to output the like the smallest length tau substring. But here we have this like very random mapping and we want to pick uh, as, as the smallest uh, hash value among a window. Then we uh, don't immediately see how to uh, do the range minimum in like root tau quantum time. And actually even the easier task, which is just to compute the hash value of a, a single string, it, it's also not clear how to do this. So the reason is the following: because we want to, or we want h to be a like a hash function. So it roughly means that it, it should have a very strong distinguishing uh, property, namely for for two different input strings. Then with good probability over the uh, the the hash function, they should receive different hash values. But at the same time, we want this hash function to be computable in roughly root tau quantum time complexity. So um, the bad news is that we, we don't know how to achieve both conditions. Like for, for most of the natural hash families such as Robin Karp uh, hash function, uh, these functions like they prove provably require linear number of quantum queries because it is at least as hard as the, uh, like the counting problem. So we, we don't know how to like uh, achieve both uh, properties for our hash uh, family. But here is a, a good news that actually we don't want a full distinguishing uh, property for all possible pairs of uh, uh, input strings X and Y. Actually, we only need to distinguish between substrings X and Y that are hugely overlapped. Like they have at least linear uh, in tall uh, length of overlap. So this is, this is because in, in the previous argument, we, we only argued about 
those substrings that are very uh, close uh, uh, in, in their positions. So if we can distinguish between two uh, substrings that are um, closely overlapped, then we can uh, apply this to our previous argument and it should be enough. So we, we don't actually need the full distinguishing property of a hash family. And uh, it turns out that if we only want this like weaker uh, notion of distinguishing property, then we can use uh, something called the deterministic sampling um, introduced by Vishkin in 1901. Um, so I will not describe this deterministic sampling in detail. So I'll just mention that this was a technique that was originally uh, used to solve the string match, exact string matching problem. Uh, originally designed for like parallel commutation, but uh, it was adapted by Ramesh and Vinay to a root n quantum algorithm. So the rough idea is that if you want to solve a pattern matching problem with pattern P and text T where the length of the text is not too much uh, larger than the pattern. And, and then you can have a, uh, in root n quantum time, you can pick uh, you can carefully pick log n many locations of the pattern. Uh, here we need to assume the pattern is non-periodic. You can uh, use these uh, log n many checkpoints. And so then if you want to find a, an exact match of the pattern inside the text, you don't need to like check all the possible uh, mismatches. You only check the uh, you only check whether the checkpoints are matched. And this is uh, less expensive because you only need to check log n many positions. And here, the, uh, the, the careful process of selecting these log n uh, locations ensure that if there are multiple like partial matches, uh, meaning that they match on all the checkpoints, then only the leftmost one could be a real match. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a like, very interesting property that was achieved by Vishkin's uh, determining sampling procedure. And uh, here we adapt this uh, uh, process. We, we instead use these checkpoints to design a hash function uh, with, again, square root evaluation uh, quantum time complexity. And uh, we can use a similar argument to argue that these checkpoints can be used to design a hash function that can distinguish between two substrings that are heavily overlapped. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about uh, about the deterministic sampling uh, procedure. So, so now we have this like hash function that can be evaluated in root tau quantum time, but we still have this uh, problem of how to compute the minimum hash value uh, among a length tau window. Uh, and we still want to do this in root tau quantum time. So here we don't want to uh, directly apply minimum finding because that gives root tau times root tau. So, so the strategy for uh, solving this issue is kind of inspired by our earlier algorithm for solving the minimum length n over two substring problem or the, the minimum string rotation problem. There we use the divide and conquer strategy. And here we can use a similar strategy uh, to, to solve roughly the, the same issue. So let's uh, take a detour and look at the minimum length n over two substring problem. Um, okay, I'll, I'll try to be uh, fast. So, so the problem is like, uh, given a length n substring, we want to find its lexicographically minimal length n over two substrings. So the starting position should belong to the left half of the string. And uh, because we are comparing using lexicographical order, so the minimum length n over two substring should also minimize its length n over four uh, prefix in terms of lexicographic order. So this gives a way to uh, decompose this problem like recursively. So uh, we, we, we divide the left half into like, uh, like two quarters, like length, length n over four uh, windows, and we do two recursion calls with half uh, problem size. And then we return the smaller one of the two. So, uh, so this is how to uh, solve this uh, problem in a recursive way. 
but there is, there is some uh, issue. So first, what if there are multiple minimizers? And uh, the solution is that if, if there are multiple minimizers, then they must form an arithmetic progression where the uh, difference is the period of the return stream. So this gives us some structure to uh, deal with this issue. Uh, namely that only the first one and the last one in the arithmetic progression could be useful. And the second issue is how to uh, like you use uh, quantum algorithms to speed up this recursive algorithm. So the idea is to use quantum minimum finding for the conquer step. So remember that we, we take the minimum of the two return values uh, in the recursive algorithm. Here we use a quantum minimum finding to pick the minimum. But to make this work, we, we need to increase the branching factor from two to something super constant so that the, the total uh, complexity could still be bounded by roughly root n. So the, the equation is like T of n equals some uh, root b, which comes from the quantum minimum finding times the T of n over b plus some overhead. And it's this overhead that gives this uh, n to little o one factor. So, so this uh, recursive strategy can be thought of as a tournament tree where you have a recursion tree and the, uh, in order for one position to survive, uh, it has to uh, win all the, uh, like the, the competitions against its siblings when it moves up from the leaf to the uh, root of the tournament tree. So we can use a similar strategy uh, in our problem of like, designing this uh, mapping H. So uh, we still have this like the tournament tree and uh, let's say they have L levels and in the I lev I level, the, the size of the subproblem has uh, length tau sub I. And we redefine the the mapping H to to look like uh, something like this. It's a like um, concatenation of uh, many uh, hash values. So the first one is the lowest level hash value, and we keep concatenating uh, until the the top level. So they are compared using lexical graphical order. So in order for a one uh, position to to become the winner it first has to win the lowest level competition and then moves up to the root. So that's uh, how we do this like lexicographical comparison between like two uh, candidates. So, so using this modified definition, we can still use the recursion and quantum minimum finding strategy to solve the range minimum problem, which uh, was used to uh, give the reporting algorithm in root tau time. So we, I, uh, I omitted some details. First, we need to deal with uh, multiple minimizers, which are more technical. And also we need to analyze the sparsity because we have this multi-level structure, the sparsity uh, uh, worsens by a, like tau to the little of one factor. Okay, uh, there are some other applications of these quantum string synchronizing sets. Uh, for example, combined with some uh, previous work uh, by Kempa and Kochumaka, it can be used to give a quantum data structure for LCE queries. And this can in turn be useful in solving the K Hamming mis uh, string matching with K Hamming mismatches uh, problem <coughs> in like slightly improved quantum query complexity. So these are some uh, applications. So here is a, a summary of like how we achieve this algorithm uh, for LCS with threshold D. The, the, the main technical component is the quantum string synchronizing set, uh, which uh, is designed based on a lot of old ideas and uh, new ideas. Okay, so open questions. The I, I guess the most interesting open question is to remove the n to the little of one factors uh, in, in this string synchronizing set. I, I guess even for the, um, the minimum rotation problem, there's still a like n to the little of one factor currently, and we don't know how to remove that. So there is some uh, very recent work on quantum divide and conquer. They use some uh, quantum adversary methods to uh, get rid of this n to the little of one factor uh, for the decision version of uh, minimum string rotation, which asks whether a specific position uh, is 
the minimum rotation, but it does not solve the like the search version, which asks for uh, like which one is the minimum rotation. So it will be interesting to solve this uh, question. Okay, thanks for listening. Well, there are questions? Maybe from the online audience? Actually, I also wanted to ask exactly this question, like if you read this uh, paper and uh, like, what do you think if this decision version can be used to solve the, do, I mean, do you see a way that uh, this decision version it can be used to solve your problem? But I, but I also didn't see it. Uh, how it can be used directly because it seems like uh, more difficult to. In this case, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So I I don't see how to like directly apply that result because here we, we don't have any like search to decision reductions, um, in in this scenario, and uh, it, it's also not clear whether their like results uh, whether their techniques can be applied in this like search version, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. It's an interesting question. Maybe one little. Oh, there's a question. Okay. Uh, Does your construction yeah. use quantum algorithms for all Chumaka Kempa applications of the synchronizing set? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. We, we haven't uh, looked into all these applications yet. I, I, I guess I, I, I would guess that some of them could be useful, but we, we haven't looked into this. Yes, yeah, we are interested in like looking for um, more applications of this uh, quantum version of synchronizing set. Maybe if I can have a very quick question just about the lower bound that you had at the beginning. So mm -hmm. then you're putting uh, 10K many dollar symbols to both sides. But yeah. So this ten is just an arbitrary number, so it will be anything. But so I guess if we put more, more and more, mm -hmm. that if we can, uh, so we will converge towards a two separation, so like a or a lower bound for uh, two approximation algorithms, basically. Uh, yeah, I, I think so. It should imply a lower bound for all like two minus epsilon approximation algorithms. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. So do you see a way how maybe this can be improved? Like have uh, not for two approximation or two minus epsilon approximation, but uh, I don't know something better. But like uh, oh, uh, yeah, that's a good question. We we, we haven't uh, looked at this problem. Yeah, we 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 were just focusing on the uh, getting a lower bound for the exact version, and we, we didn't think about how to optimize the uh, the gap for the approximation case. So if you don't have uh, more questions, then let's thank again you for the very nice talk. Thank you.